we received a lot of suggestions from our viewers of our last review about movies that they wanted us to look at. Most of the movies had an underlying theme of boats sinking and sad or tragic yeah. endings. <laughs> yes, the husbands always get it in the movies. We decided to go more lighthearted with a post-apocalyptic <laughs> film of yeah, sailing and seamanship water world. In the distant future, the world's polar ice caps have melted and the water, for some reason, has risen to dramatic heights, maybe hundreds of feet, maybe thousands of feet deep. Yes, it's the apocalypse. Yes, the world as we know it has ended, where most of humanity has died off and all that's left is sailing. In your opinion, Ravi, is this post-apocalyptic or is this utopia? I don't know, it's an interesting question because is sailing about sailing endlessly or is sailing about having two destinations and enjoying destinations? I think for most people it's all oh, just get there and get an anchor down and go have a beer and... Yeah, good point. Um, <laughs> it depends if you're a... if you view sailing as the journey or is sailing as the destinations. I can remember watching it on television in between lots and lots of TV ads. Yeah, it's definitely one of those movies where I actually know different versions of it, like, oh, in this version, they don't show this and that. There's not many movies I, I know by heart. Yes, yeah, so and we both managed to watch, when we were younger, versions of the movie that we now, we don't own that version now, but they were longer versions with lots of scenes that have been edited out in this current version that we have. But yeah. you still get the gist of the story. The star of the film, no, not Kevin Costner. Oh, no, the Trimoran. The stuff. Trimoran, a 60 foot Trimoran that was built specifically for the movie. It was based on a design that already existed. The but French boat, the one, some, I think one that wrote the wrong. But this one was built specifically to look good in those opening shots. Then they also built a second version, which was pretty much uh, a floating raft to. Uh, highlight all the little gizmos and gadgets on deck that uh, Kevin Costner, or the character called the Mariner, uses in the movie. What is easier to filter? Seawater or piss? The famous scene where he's taking a piss in his water maker, basically, <laughs> and, and pumping it and drinking it. I'm pretty sure that it's easier to desalinate water rather than to filtrate all the impurities in your piss. I'm pretty sure you're having to filter out more waste than salt water, which you're just trying to filter out. And in, in, in most cases, if you're using the, the desalinator properly, you're only having to filter out salt. Yeah. I don't think that cities are directly filtering their shit and piss. I think New York does. New York gets most of its water back, actually. No, but I think that they filter it send it out to sea they, send, they, the, they the send the solid waste out to sea they send it out to sea but and then they they may use desalination mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is in a way it's exactly what kevin costner is doing yeah. at the beginning of this film okay all i'm saying is that obviously they could have had the concept of solar stills appear somewhere where you just have some yes. sort of plastic or glass dome or box or something where you're evaporating water and having the purified water drip down he arrives at the atoll and people seem to be dying of, we're not sure, they've got large sea creatures that they've caught. They seem to be dying either of hunger or, or thirst um, or inbreeding, maybe all of the above together. I, lo I love the whole idea that you can have mechanical energy generated by having just a spinning, like lower part of your, your boat that just powers you know winches they say it runs as prop in the, in a description one of the websites describing the making of the movie yeah. they said it it's it spins as prop the, the trimaran is the hero of the story <laughs> i i like that they put so much thought into how this character would have gotten to this point where he could sail indefinitely and and have all the power and and his needs dealt with that's not a that's not a stupid part of the movie that's one of the non-stupid parts of the movie. <laughs> we do know that this movie was a ripoff of Mad Max and riding the wave of apocalyptic Mad, yeah, Mad Max popularity. Packs, yeah. Your question was why don't they why haven't they made a reboot or a remake yes. of Mad Max in my opinion has been the greatest remake of all of any old movie. Yeah, one of the greatest remakes and I think that they could do 
They should get the guy who made Road Fury. He should remake the new Water World, and it should be the same thing. It should just be no non-stop, high-packed sailing. High-packed. Yeah, shot, <laughs> shot by, like, professional crews of, like, you know, Volvo Ocean Racers, and those guys just be, like... Yeah. It should be a high speed, just people grinding on winches and fucking yeah. going at each other with, with spear guns. It should just be, like, one of those, like... Mad Max was all for the... Adrenaline junkies and, and car junkies, people who are interested in tinkering with cars and on land. So Waterworld is simply the version for those of us who like to tinker with boats and everything to do with what the apocalypse would look like in a future of, of water. They spent more money on the movie. Yes. They spent $175 million to $200 million on this movie. At the time, it was the most expensive movie ever filmed. And I think the question is not like, oh, why didn't they put enough effort into the project? It was just more like the budget was so high that something more should have come out of it. And I think that the concept is fun and an adrenaline pumping version of this, just as Mad Max was redone, could be really good. Yeah, no, there are some scenes that I think are so lazy, like someone... Put a lot of money in his pocket and ran in this movie just like the way you ran those jet skis that blow up eight feet apart from each other. The silly explosions and continuity problems aside, because you can, of course, find all sorts of continuity problems in the film. You know, he was wearing boots, then he wasn't wearing boots. All that aside, what is the problem with this movie that it doesn't seem to, like, Obviously, lots of movie money was the obviously movie. lots of money was spent on this movie. What was the problem? The problem, in my opinion, was they didn't get any they didn't get an expression on the sea. Like it was obviously gone out and shot on the calmest days. You know, like oh, in the next three months, whenever it's calm, we're gonna go outside and shoot. The, the, it's a yeah. movie that was very like forbid uh, forgiving on equipment and on. There's very few, very few scenery done when the sea ha has any expression on it. Almost all the scenes is basically him just almost motoring around, like. And of course, you'll read on IMDb that you know the directors were warned about filming in these kind of circumstances. Yeah. It's hard to film on the ocean. I think that they heeded the warning. Yes. Uh, I, uh, apparently, the set. So there was the the big atoll that was um, the main kind of set piece for this movie was filmed off the coast of oh, Hawaii yeah. and uh, apparently that still got ravaged by a, a hurricane or two during the filming and it was a disaster and that's part of what drove up the budget was just even with, when they're not trying to capture certain bad weather or trying to make things more uh, adrenaline pumping for example with weather shots yeah there's no there's no challenge given throughout the movie to the character from 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 the from element the sea. From, from the sea. sea. Yeah. The sea is this forgiving, flat, flat, flat. I cannot get flat. I cannot come. There's no word. It's never cloudy. It's never. Yeah. There's never twenty knots of wind. It's like a lot of people dying of heat. Like. Yeah, which brings us to the the concept of. If there was a water world, what would that look like? What, what would the physics of it be? Would yeah. it be a, a planet of constant swell, of monster swell? We were talking about the film Interstellar and how they land on a water planet and, spoilers, there's giant mountain-sized waves sweeping across the planet. The planet is close to a black hole. It's almost like they explain in the movie, oh, it's the black hole that's making the big waves. But I think that they're actually seeing something that we thought about in, in Waterworld, you know, just the planet Earth, completely covered only in water, would see some sort of wave action, the waves building up, just sweeping across the planet, un, unending. Un unchallenged. Unchallenged. Un unchallenged, yeah. The swells, in my opinion, would get bigger and bigger, and you know, have a lot of freak wave phenomena, cross wave phenomena. The weather patterns of the world are changing and there will never be the covering of all the yes. continents to the point where wave action will will roll across the planet unstopped which would be a nightmare in itself I, I think it's interesting if you had the scenario where the entire continents were covered with water it would be some horror movie nightmare scenario like an interstellar 
where there's they giant get waves, waves every and, so often, and, and the world becomes an uninhabitable because not because the climate changes and things become unstable, but rather because it would be called like wave world, and everybody <laughs> would be dying every time a wave comes or a storm comes. Yeah, and and it's interesting that that's the opposite of what water world is portrayed as yeah it's not about storms or weather or waves or as you say the expression yeah, it's, a, it's a calmless aspect in the entire movie you know there's yeah. explosions and humans fighting but the sea is always very pleasant and yeah and forgiving and kind and shouldn't they be like excited that he's there he's a he's a guy who can breathe underwater and swim he represents the future in the society yeah he represents everything that they should like you know he's got good boat he can get he's resources. He's polite, he's nice. He's well, a, he's I wouldn't a... call him polite. Hey, what are you doing? He's, yeah, he's, he's, he doesn't like humans very much, like they say. But that's not... It doesn't matter whether he's nice or not. The point is, is that this character represents the person who can get everything they seem to not have. Yes. You would think they would be like, Oh, the mutant has showed up. And he's going to get stuff for us. Let's be really nice to him. Yeah, but no. He's <laughs> like to cage him and condemn him to death for no particular reason at all. I, I, get, I guess maybe what we're getting to with this is like character development problems. Like, yeah. why are these characters doing this? We don't have a good picture of why they hate him. We're not getting a good picture of why they don't care to... Why they don't feel like killing each other later on in the movie. This is an action movie. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Yeah. It's not my biggest thing. It's got, it's got tons of interesting characters and funny characters. It's got the long-haired guy. You're talking about the character who they build up should be dying the most gruesome and horrible yes. death. And he, then he, he just doesn't. The deacon, who is the leader of the smokers, which are the bad uh, future ocean dwellers, they run their whole society on the giant oil tanker full of the crude oil. Which, in my opinion, is also the most unrealistic thing in the movie because I grew up on a boat where people smoked cigarettes and it was always the first thing that ran out. <laughs> so, yes, very and they have cigarettes 500 years in the future makes no sense. Yeah, right? it makes sense that they have a, a, a ship full of crude oil after 500 years. Maybe that could happen. Yeah. Maybe they went from one oil tanker left over to another oil tanker left over. We can deal with that, but yes, I totally agree. They would not have cigarettes left over to, no. ch to throw around like no. this as you're going to crowds. Just not going to happen. As if it's candy, no, not happen. Along with the alcohol on the ship as well. It's the first thing that, as is being demonstrated out in the real world right now, as yeah. we sit here in a Mexico completely dry of specifically beer, there is not one beer to be drank in Mexico right now. <laughs> Um, that's the first thing to go, along with toilet paper, apparently. So this society of bad guys is run by the deacon, and he's like a very Trump-like character. He's got a lot of creative, mean names for everybody, every character. He's got, he, he's constantly coming up with, you know, insults and insulting names for everybody. He's a wily one, that ichthy demon. He's like a turd that won't flush. And also holds rallies in a similar way as well. They'll row for a month before they figure out I'm faking it. The main character, the Mariner, I think they did a good job as a character as a sailor. I think he's believable. Yeah, and, the and silent. The, and the drifters and the sailors in this movie are, are quite, they're all loopy, they're all kind of out of it. He has a good sailor sense, he has like boom sense, like sixth sense. He knows when the booms kind of come yeah. in his head. Preloaded halyards. He's got preloaded halyards all over the deck, ready yeah. to do all the the stunts and acrobatics and you know everyday boat things that he needs to do. You were watching some sort of review of Waterworld already, a uh, honest trailer of Waterworld or whatever, and they and they say this character he doesn't talk a lot. He's very one dimensional. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's fine. I I think that's what would happen to you. My boat. My boat. I think that's how he would react if a centuries old vessel uh, that was passed along from generation to generation and decked out and pimped out. That's how he'd react. Uh, the, the relatively poorly computer animated sea creature in this movie yes. is the only problem with this movie. I tried to put myself back in the context of when this movie was made 
Uh, it came out the same year as uh, Toy Story. It yeah. almost looks like the same animation that you was in Star Wars when they re-released it in DVD. You remember they yeah. did that? It looks like a shitty Star re-release of the original Star Wars movies animation. <laughs> yes. When you're underwater, even if you are, you know, four or five hundred meters away, you know, and they throw something in the water and it goes bang, you feel that in the water. Like it hurts your ears, it disorientates you, it feels like you get, your head gets hit by a hammer, even far away. Even so, a small charge. Even a small charge. So the fact that he blows two charges right next to himself underwater seems to me... Happy now. I, I liked your idea that he's probably making rope out of hair, people's hair, and the, the dive bell that they use to go down deep and everything is, is super sketchy. I mean, they're all living on the edge and you, yeah. you don't expect them to use more than one rope for climbing the mast or any rope at all or, or any safeties. There's use of a sextant in this movie for the characters to finally figure out which way they need to point with the airship to get to land. You need to have a precise timepiece to operate a sextant. You need an almanac, you need the charts. So they're missing a couple of pieces. You can't just point the sextant and be like, we're going that away. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a theme here with all these movies. And what's the theme? All the one-eyed characters and eye patches. There's a version of Noah's Ark with the, uh, the actor John Voight, and it's a really cheesy looking movie also from the 90s I think I'm pretty sure it's from the 90s and you know the theme here the boat the flooded world and Noah's Ark is a story that has also been put into a cheesy 90s movie format and nobody seemed to complain about Noah's Ark they took artistic liberties to bring that to the screen and made a mockery of a <laughs> religious text and nobody seemed to complain about Noah's Ark and Noah's Ark is all about a boat traveling lonely over the ocean world, which has been drenched, which has been flooded. Mm. There's, there's parallels to the Moses story of the, the child being uh, uh, sent away in a basket. Oh, thank God.